In this video, we're once again going to have a demonstration of the projection operator. The playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, here's the formula that we derived previously. And let's say that we have a plane in three-dimensional space, and we want a formula so that if we have any three-dimensional vector, we want to know how we can project that vector onto this plane. So first thing we need um, are basis vectors for the plane. Remember that for the subspace that we're projecting into, we need to know the basis vectors for that subspace because those basis vectors are what comprise the columns of matrix A. Now, we see that the plane does contain the zero vector, so it is a genuine subspace. So that plane, or that subspace, will be uh, spanned by any two independent vectors in the plane, or specifically any um, non-parallel vectors in that plane. Any two of them will span it. How can we find them? Let's say, for example, that the x component is 0. So we have x equals 0. Then we would have y equals minus 3z. So that corresponding vector, let's say that z equals minus 1. Then y would have to equal 3. x is 0. So this vector is in the plane. To get a non-parallel vector, let's say that z is 0. Then we have 2x equals y. So a corresponding vector might be, well, z is 0. Let y be 2, then x would have to be 1. This vector is in the plane. Clearly, these two vectors are literally independent. There's no number I can multiply this one to get this vector. So we have a basis now for the plane. And those two vectors are what are going to be the column vectors of matrix A. So that is 0, 3, minus 1 an A transpose, that will be 0, 3, minus 1, 1, 2, 0. Now we have to multiply A transpose times A. So we have 0, 3, minus 1, Oops. We included one vector for matrix A, but not the second column vector. There's our matrix A. So multiply these out across and down 0, 9 plus 1 is 10. This is A transpose, and this is matrix A. Across and down, 0, 6 plus 0 is 6. Now remember what we said in the previous videos. We said that when we multiply these together to get the multiplied matrix A transpose A, we said it would be symmetric. So the off diagonal elements should be equal to each other. So this up here should be 6. Let's see what happens. We go across and down 0 plus 6 plus 0. Indeed, that is 6. And for here, across and down 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 0. And indeed, our multiplied matrix, our normal matrix, A transpose times A 
is symmetric. The off-diagonal elements are equal. Furthermore, since A has two columns, both of them are linearly independent, then this will have an inverse because all the columns of matrix A are linearly independent. Uh, that's a fact that we will prove in a future video that when you, well, first of all, when you multiply these matrices together, you also get a square matrix and you will have a symmetric matrix. If for our matrix A, all the columns that it possesses are literally independent, this would be non-singular. It will have an inverse. Because that's a fact that we will prove um, in a future video. And we need to know what is the inverse of that. So A transpose A inverse that is the inverse of this matrix. And we have done this in previous videos, taking matrix inversions, and this comes out to be equal to that matrix right there is the inverse of this one and we're not doing it we've done that in previous videos remember how it was set up here's our matrix of interest it's non-singular so it does have an inverse that means that with our row operations we can reduce this to the identity matrix 1 0 0 1 then those same row operations that reduce this to the identity matrix, those same row operations applied to the identity matrix produce the inverse of this matrix. And again, we've covered this in the previous videos, so we go through those row operations, multiplying here by minus six tenths for the first one, and so forth. Um, we get the inverse, we can factor out a 1 over 14, so here is the inverse of A transpose A. Now notice that, as we said, this is a symmetrical matrix, it always will be, and whenever you have some matrix, say C, that is symmetrical, its inverse matrix is also symmetrical. Again, a fact that we'll prove um, in a future video, but you can see it happening right here. This is a symmetrical matrix. Here is its inverse, and this also is a symmetrical matrix. Now, we want to get the projection matrix. That is, if we have some vector in three-dimensional space, how can we project it onto this plane? where this plane is spanned by any two linearly independent vectors in the plane. Here we found these two to use for our basis. So what do we need to do? We know what matrix A is, that's this. We know it's transpose, that's this. And we also know what this is, right here. So we have to multiply matrix A times this times this times A transpose. The projection matrix P is A the inverse of this normal matrix times A transpose. So there is matrix A that times this times A transpose. So let's clear the board and we'll write that in explicitly. And again, the key here is that when we have realized this is a plane and the plane can be spanned by any two vectors in the plane that are not parallel, which we could find, for example, by saying x is 0, what's the corresponding vector, z is 0, 
What's the corresponding vector? These are linearly independent, so these span that plane, or they span that subspace that we're projecting into. So those two vectors are what comprise the column vectors of our matrix A. And that's the key to setting up the, the whole problem. OK, so now we have that the projection vector P equals matrix A. That was 0, 3, minus 1. times that inverse, and that was 5 minus 6 minus 6, 10, times 1 over 14, times A transpose. So modifying these together, will give us our um, projection matrix. So let's see what kind of an answer we come up with. Let's multiply these two together and see what kind of an expression we get. So we have P equals 1 over 14 times multiplying these two matrices Cross and down, 0, that's minus 6. Then across and down, 15 minus 12, that's 3. Across and down, to be minus 5. And same thing here, across and down, here we have 0, 10 times 1 is 10. And we go across and down, minus 18 plus 20, that's plus 2. And then across and down, plus 6 plus 0 is plus 6. So we multiply these together, then we have this matrix. And again, it's just doing the same thing again. So we have projection matrix P is multiplying these two matrices together across and down to give us here, across and down, across and down. It gives us this matrix right here. Notice that our projection matrix P itself is symmetrical. Here we have the diagonals with the off diagonals are equal to each other. Uh, will the projection matrix P always be symmetrical? Yes, it will. And we will prove that um, in a future video. So what we have here then is if we multiply this by any, let's just copy this under the whiteboard. We have projection matrix P equals 1 over 14. And we have 10, 2, 6, 2, 13, minus 3, 6, minus 3, 5. A nice symmetric matrix. It will always be symmetrical, a fact that we will prove later on. But there it is. If we multiply this by any three-dimensional vector, the resulting vector that we get, those three components, that vector that we obtain will be in this plane here. So our projection matrix takes any 
three-dimensional vector, and it gives three components of the vector projected onto this plane or onto this subspace. Now, if we had a problem where it required more than two basis vectors to describe the subspace, then our matrix A would just have more than two columns. The rest of the operations, though, um, are identical. It's the same kind of math that's involved. It will always be this formula. And as we saw, the, ma the projection matrix itself came out to be symmetrical. And in fact, using this formula, we will prove in a future video that indeed the projection matrix, if we take as transpose, it does equal just the projection matrix. The projection matrix itself is symmetrical, something that we will prove in future videos. OK, we've had then two videos where we have found a projection matrix. In the next video, we're going to consider matrices m by n, where m is greater than n. There's more rows than there are columns, or that means there's more equations than there are unknowns. That's an overdetermined system. In general, they don't have a solution or an exact solution. That's when the method of least squares becomes applicable. Before we get to that, we will consider, kind of take a review of overdetermined systems in our next video. Then after that, we will see how least squares uh, applies to those types of problems. So those will be coming up very shortly in the future videos. And again, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university dot org.